Live from WFSB, Elliot Polakoff with Sports Sunday. Welcome to Sports Sunday. I'm Elliot Polakoff, and man, what a day of baseball. NCAA tournament bursts on the line for a whole bunch of Nutmeg State schools. We're also going to get you ready for the Travelers Championship coming into town in less than a month. But this is one of the few weekends of the year where we start things off with some racing, and more specifically, the Indy 500. Memorial Day weekend, it's not really complete without it. And this year's race definitely won for the history books. Only one American driver has won in the last four years out in Indianapolis. Francis Simon Pagano trying to become the first French driver to win the race since 1920. It wouldn't be the Indy 500 without some crashes. This year's race definitely had its fair share. Ultimately, it was Pagano and American Alexander Rossi, the 2016 winner, duking it out for the top spot. Rossi takes the lead with 23 laps to go, but then Pagano takes it back with just over two laps left, and the Frenchman holds on to win the 2019 Indy 500. The 99-year drought for French drivers is officially over. Shifting gears to Major League Baseball with the New York Yankees. They are rolling. Winners of 11 of their last 12. It doesn't matter what ragtag lineup they throw out on the field. The Bronx Bombers are getting it done. New York looking to make it eight straight wins with a sweep of the Royals, and they get off to a good start. Clint Frazier hitting a grounder that gets past the Royals shortstop. Glaber Torres scores. one nothing Yankees on top. But then Kansas City started putting up runs in a hurry. Not Domingo Herman's best outing for the pinstripes. This two-run shot by Hunter Dozier, one of four home runs allowed by Herman on the afternoon. And just like that, it was 7-1 Royals. But then it's the Yankees' turn to show off some pop. Glaber Torres belting one to center field, just creeps over the wall. A three-run shot cuts the deficit in half. Bottom nine, 7-5 Kansas City. Aaron Hicks coming through with the bases loaded. Two-run score, 7-7 ball game. But in the 10, Gio Urshela can't handle the hard grounder by Whit Merrifield. Billy Hamilton scores easily for Kansas City, and the Yankees' winning streak comes to an end. The Royals win it 8-7 in 10 innings. The Red Sox, meanwhile, looking to avoid getting swept by Houston. 1-1 game in the fourth. Rafael Devers smashing that ball to deep center field, 423 feet, and Boston takes a 2-1 lead on Devers' seventh home run of the year. In the fifth, the Red Sox take advantage of some bad defense by the Astros. Yuli Gurriel booting that one. Eduardo Nunez comes around to score from second for the Sox. And runs have been hard to come by for Boston in this series, so they will definitely take it any way they can get it. Eduardo Rodriguez goes six innings for Boston, gives up just one run as the Red Sox avoid the sweep and win it 4-1. to one. The Mets trying to get back to 500 with a win against Detroit this afternoon. Down 3 0 in the fourth. Detroit with the shift on Todd Frazier, so he just bunts it into some open space. And I really don't know why more players don't try to do that. It is a great way to just kill the other team's momentum. The Mets are on the board. Later in the fourth, Adani Echevarria lining one to right, and that ball is out of there. A three run shot for Echevarria, and the Mets on top four to three. From there, the Mets pitching did the rest with a little bit of help from the defense. Carlos Gomez laying out for the diving grab in the sixth. Take another look, just gets that glove under it, and the Mets hold off Detroit 4-3. to three. They now begin a seven-game road trip out west against the Dodgers starting tomorrow night. When UConn and Cincinnati played in a three-game series back in April, the two teams combined for 29 runs. When the Huskies and Bearcats met again today in the American Conference Tournament title game, they almost put up that same number of runs in just nine innings. Cincinnati the two seed, UConn the four seed down in Clearwater, Florida, and it's the Bearcats that get the scoring started first. Jace Mercer, a bullet to right. Christian Fedko ends up with it. He throws it to third, but Joey Weimer's already taken off for home for the Bearcats. One nothing since he on top. But in the bottom of the second, here comes UConn. Michael Chiaviti continuing his red hot play in the Sunshine State with a double off the right field wall. David Langer scores 1-1 game. The Huskies were playing catch up all game long in this matchup. Down five in the third. Chris Winkle roping one to right center. That scores two more Huskies, and it's a 6 3 ball game. But remember how I said that UConn gave up not that many runs in the AAC tournament? They gave up 22 of them this afternoon. Bearcats win big, and now the Huskies have to wait until tomorrow to find out their NCAA tournament fit. 
An all Nutmeg State MAAC final as Fairfield and Quinnipiac battling for a spot in the NCAA tournament. Top of the first, former Haddam Killingworth stub Brian Mosky solo shot to left, one nothing Bobcats. Quinnipiac still up one in the fifth. Anthony Baselli with a check swing base hit to right. And that scores a run. You don't see an RBI like that very often. Tie game at three. This one was tied at five after nine innings. Quinnipiac trying to win it in the 12th. But the Stags with a beautiful throw to get the Bobcats runner at home plate. Into the 13th inning we go. Bases loaded for the Bobcats in the 13th. Fairfield with a wild pitch. Evan Volgamore racing on home, and he is safe. That is the ball game. Quinnipiac headed to the NCAA tournament on a walk-off wild pitch. They beat Fairfield 6-5. In the NEC tournament final, Central Connecticut State trying to knock off top seed of Bryant. Scoreless in the fifth when former Shelton Gale Chris Canios beats the throw to first. Former Montville Indian buddy Dwayne scores 1-0 CCSU. Bryant rallies to take a 2-1 lead, and that is the score in the seventh when former Newtown Nighthawk Dave Matthews cranks one to deep left center. That one just gets out of there. Solo shot ties things up at two, and look at Matthews. He is fired up. Still 2-2 in the eighth. Matt Bertacci hits the perfect ball in the perfect spot to beat the shift. Canios races home from second. Central Connecticut State on top, 3-2. They're celebrating like they've already won this thing. But it was only a matter of time until they actually did. Top of the ninth, one on for Bryant. Bulldogs hitting to a double play to end it. And Central Connecticut State finishing things off in style. The Blue Devils, they are headed back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2017. Big time win for CCSU down in Norwich. And also, we got to give a shout out to Eastern Connecticut State softball. Their season came to an end this afternoon in the NCAA Division III semifinals with a 3-2 loss to Emory. But still, hey, an unforgettable year for the Warriors. Another year, another trip to the NCAA title game for the Yale men's lacrosse team. And if the Bulldogs can take care of business tomorrow against Virginia, they'll put themselves in some pretty elite company. Only six programs have ever won back-to-back -back national championships in men's lacrosse. Yale has a chance to be the seventh with a win over the Cavaliers. The Elis are red hot coming into this matchup. They led by as many as nine against Penn State in yesterday's semifinal matchup, while Virginia, on the other hand, needed extra time to win its last two tournament games. Action underway at 1 p.m. tomorrow in Philly, and for the Bulldogs, they're just trying to stick to what got them here. I think we just had great spacing today on offense, I think. Uh, we made it hard for them to double team because our spacing was so good and we were so spread out. So I just had uh, a little bit of time and a lot of room. So it, uh, it's, it's all about the spacing of the team, I think. It has been too long since a Boston team won a sports title, right? The Bruins, the latest squad to try to bring one home as they take on the St. Louis Blues in the Stanley Cup Finals. This was the scene at TD Garden earlier today. A whole lot of media in attendance for one final practice for Boston. Game one between the Bruins and Blues tomorrow night at TD Garden. Puck drops at 8 p.m. And we've still got a lot more to come tonight on this edition of Sports Sunday. When we return, Joe Zone taking a look at some of the newest rule changes in the game of golf. And the state playoffs are underway in spring high school sports. A whole bunch of conference champs were crowned this past Friday. We're going to take a look back at the final regular season edition of Friday Night Frenzy right after the break.